So it says a 50.00 kilogram chandelier is supported by a 2.00 meter long chain with a mass of 25.0 kilograms that is evenly distributed throughout the length of the chain. So we have three questions. The first one says find the tension in A, the bottom link of the chain, B, the tension in the top link of the chain, C, the tension in the middle link of the chain. So you have a chandelier, it's hanging from a chain. And we're gonna draw a picture in just a second, but in your mind, that's what you should have in your mind. And we have to find the tension in three different positions of the chain. Now, when someone says, or some problem says, find the tension, all that means is find the force acting through the chain. So it's just code for find the force. So we know that the chain has to be pulling up in order to uh, hold up that chandelier. And so what we're trying to do is figure out the uh, differing amounts of force that are having to exist along the length of that chain. All right, so let's draw the picture. And I'm gonna draw, you know, uh, just a very basic picture to begin with. So let's say we have some roof here and we have some, I'm not gonna draw an actual chain, but you know, you could kind of do something like this. This thing is a chain and then a chandelier is hanging from it. And what does the chandelier look like? I have no idea. That is our chandelier. <clears throat> All right, now you can label your stuff ex however you wanna do, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna say that the height of this chain or the length of this chain is 2.0 meters. And I'm gonna say the mass of this chain is 25 kilograms, right? The mass of the entire chain. And then I'm gonna say the mass of the chandelier down here is 50 kilograms, all right? Now the question, the first question is part A, what is the tension in the bottom link of the chain? So you gotta imagine this is a chain here and the bottom link of the, ch of the chain is right on top of it. So really, if you, if you were gonna draw a free body diagram of that situation, what you would do is you would draw the chandelier, that would be down here, and basically just like a single link of a chain, which is a little tiny thing. Now the entire chain has a mass of 25 kilograms, but this is where you get to, uh, to do some creative license in physics. The, uh, the entire chain is 25 kilograms. But as you get to a smaller and smaller segments of chain, it's, it's, it's uh, less and less and less mass because you're cutting off parts of the chain. When you get down to one tiny little link, that link does have a very small mass, but what we're gonna do is ignore the mass. Maybe it's one gram, maybe it's half a gram, maybe it's a third of a gram, maybe, but it, we know in real life it's not zero, but because it's so small, we're just gonna ignore it because it's gonna be a very, this, the mass of this tiny little link is gonna be very small compared to the 50 kilograms that the actual chandelier uh, has a mass of. So we know the entire chain is 25, half of the chain would be half of this mass, and a fourth of this chain will be a fourth of this mass. One tiny little link is gonna be so small that we're effectively not gonna count the mass at all in our free body diagram. And that probably is the only little trick to this problem. All right, <clears throat> so what we're gonna say is this chain is experiencing some tension, which is up, and this uh, chandelier has a mass of, of mg, uh, mass times uh, gravity of this guy, and we know what the mass of the chandelier is, so we can put that those piece of information in here. So how do we find the tension in the bottom link, uh, link of the chain? That's what it's asking us to do. We have to write a Newton's law which governs uh, this situation. So uh, what we say is the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now technically I should put F in the Y direction, acceleration in the Y direction, but we know that this whole problem is only in the Y direction. There's nothing happening horizontally. So I'm gonna drop the subscripts and I just know that these are in the Y direction. Now up is positive, so the tension goes right here. Down is MG, because this is the weight acting down, and that's gonna be equal to the mass of the chandelier times its acceleration, but this is not moving, it's just hanging there. So the acceleration is zero. So the tension is gonna be equal to, since this is zero on the other side, I can move it to the other side. I'll just do it as m times g. So this is zero, add this to the other side, and it becomes the tension is equal to mg, right? So it kind of makes sense that the tension in this last link has to be equal to the weight of the chandelier because nothing is moving, nothing is accelerating, nothing, everything's in equilibrium, so the tension has to balance the weight. So what do we have here? The tension equals the mass of what? Of the chandelier. Yes, of course the chain has mass, but we're only considering way down here near the bottom where the chain has really no mass effectively. So we're gonna put 50 right here and then 9.8 for gravity. This is kilograms, 
This is meters per second squared, so we have the correct units. And so the tension in that part of the chain is 490 newtons. So 50 times 9.8. And it's a positive number, which means the tension is acting up. All right, so that's it. It looks like a trick question, but, uh, but look at there's very few mathematical steps here. Now let's take a look at part B. Part B says find the tension in the top link of the chain. So now instead of considering just a link down here, we're going to consider the entire link, link, of, link of the chain, or li all of the links of the chain, and so the very top one up here. So we're going to draw a new free body diagram that's going to look something like this. So here's the chandelier, and attached to it is a chain, and this is the very top link of the chain. Right? And uh, coming out of the top link of this chain is some tension, which we're going to call T. And then what we have right here is we have a uh, mass times gravity acting down uh, right here. But the issue is, I mean, you could kind of do it either way, but the, the issue is what we have is mass of the chandelier and we also have the mass of this. So there's really a weight of the chain and there's a weight of this. So it's kind of hard to draw. I guess you could kind of right here, you could put uh, you know, mass of the chain times gravity, like, you know, these are different masses though, because this is the mass of the chandelier and this is the mass of the chain. Or you could just consider it as one object that has the sum of both of the masses. So what we're gonna do is go over here and say that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So the upward force is the tension, T, and the downward forces are what? It's the mass of the chandelier times gravity, right? And so the, uh, uh, mass of the chandelier is, uh, what was it, 50. So 50 times 9.8. But then we have the mass of this chain, which is another subtraction because it's a downward force and it's the mass of that chain, which is 25 kilograms, again, times gravity. And that's equal to uh, uh, the mass of the, of the total system uh, there times zero. So basically there's a zero on the right-hand side for the same reason. There is no acceleration of the system. So the acceleration on the right-hand side, this is the mass of the, the total mass of the system. The acceleration is zero, so we still put a zero on the right-hand side. So what we have, you can factor out a 9.8, right? And what you can uh, do there is you could say 9.8 parentheses, and then you could say, first of all, let me erase my equal sign. I have a, I'm gonna factor out a negative 9.8 from both of these guys. And on the inside, I'm gonna have 50 plus 25, and that's equal to zero. Make sure you understand what I did. This is a 9.8, this is a 9.8. I'm gonna pull it out. I'm also gonna pull out the negative one, so they have the negative there, 9.8, but then on the inside I have positive because I already pulled the negatives out right here. So notice what this is. The upward tension is T. This is like mg, the weight of the, of the chandelier plus the chain as a total unit times gravity, and that's acting downward, so this quantity is negative. All right, so let's move it to the other side. The tension is gonna be equal to 9.8 times 50 plus 70, uh, or 25 is 75. And so what you end up getting is 75 times 9.8, and so the tension is 735 newtons. And again, it's acting upward because it is uh, pointed up like this, and that makes sense. Now the tension in the chain at the top is much more than it is in part A. It was only 490 newtons, but that's because the tension down here was only supporting the weight of the chandelier. And up here, the tension in the top link of the chain is supporting the entire chandelier plus all the weight of the chain itself, and that's why it is greater. All right, so now let's do the last part. So here we want to figure out what is the tension in the middle link of the chain. So we'll draw another free body diagram like this. And what we're gonna do is we're going to draw only half the chain, and what I'll do is I'll kind of like draw a little dotted line like right here, representing that there is a little more of the chain uh, there. But what we really wanna know is what is the internal tension in that link going up right there? Only half the chain though, right? And so there's uh, the mass of the chandelier, and there's the mass of only half of the chain that is being supported by that link, all right? So how do we handle that? We say the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So what are the forces in this situation? In the up direction, we have the tension, but then in the down direction, we have the mass of the chandelier and the mass of half of the chain. And in this way, let's do it a little different than before. Let's consider it to be one total unit, which is the sum of these two masses. 
So what we're going to have is it's going to be m, which is 50, plus half of the chain, which is 1250, because the whole chain was 25, so half of that's 12.5. And then this is the mass of the chandelier, and then gravity is 9.8. And that's equal to ma. But again, the acceleration is zero, so the whole thing is really not moving, so it's just going to be zero on the right-hand side. Zero because the acceleration is zero. So you see, all we've done is said the tension is acting up, the weight is acting down, but the, the weight is really the mass of half the chain plus the chandelier times gravity. Okay? So the tension is going to be equal to, when we move this to the other side, it's going to be 62.5 times 9.8. We just add these together and then we move it to the other side to make it a positive 62.5 times 9.8. And I'm not a human calculator, so I have the answer written down here. So 62.5 times 9.8 is 612.5 newtons. And that's the final answer. So when we're looking at the entire chain, the tension at the very top is supporting the weight of the chain plus the entire chandelier. So the tension has to be the maximum, 635. The tension being supported by the middle link of the chain is only supporting half the chain plus the weight of the chandelier. So it supports uh, uh, 612.5. And the tension that the very bottommost link close to the chandelier is supporting is the, the least of all of these because it's only supporting the weight of the chandelier itself. But you see how in every single case we're doing the same thing. Sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. That's all we're doing. The only real difference in this part A, part B, and part C was that the masses were different in each case. One of them was just the chandelier. One of them was the chandelier plus half of the chain. And the other one was the chandelier plus the entire chain. So I'd like you to solve this. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue working with free body diagrams. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.